Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Dark Flame Warlock with repeater crossbows. In this video, you'll see how I painted the Dark Flame Warlock with contrast paints to a tabletop battle ready standard. Our warlock is already assembled using plastic glue and I've primed him with a wraith bone spray undercoat. We'll mostly be using the Citadel contrast paints in this video and the brush that I use will be mostly the Army Painter Wargamer character brush. First I took some Gorilla Super Glue and then just applied a tiny bit to the bottom of the miniature and this is going to help it stick to the sprue that I've cut here. And I just took a little piece of sprue and trimmed it off. And I just held it in place. And now that is fixed and really strong and can be used in the painting handle there. But I wanted to put it on a pot because I'm doing a few models at the same time. So I just glued it to the top of a paint pot. Let's get started. And our first paint is the Contrast Black Templar. And this is going to be for the boots and all the black leather parts of the model. With this warlock, the black leather boots are almost like leggings. They go up quite far up the legs there. But you can see there's some gaps where we're going to see some flesh coming through later on. And here I just decided to go over this with the contrast paint and cover those areas up without being too careful. And then I'll touch them up later on. But you'll see here I'm applying the black contrast paint now. And I'm being quite generous. I'm loading up my brush and putting most of the paint into the recesses and I'm starting my brush strokes and trying to end them where I want most of that paint to build up. And now I'm moving up to these little arm guards here and not as much paint now but still quite a lot and I'm putting it on in one nice thick coat and this contrast paint's great because it's just going to simply be one coat and that's going to give us some nice shadows and some of the raised areas are going to be highlighted too. Okay, now moving on to the snake bite leather, and this is going to be for all the leather parts of the model. And there's a little belt here, and also like a little crop top underneath that cloak. And these are quite fiddly, these canine shadow stalkers, to get in amongst all the weapons and the cloaks and everything. So just move the model. I find that I'm making sure I move the model rather than move myself, and that makes it a lot easier to get into all the places. And I just take my time and I'm trying to load that brush up again. This is gonna be dark under here, so I'm putting quite a lot of paint under there and really getting stuck in and pushing it and guiding that paint to where I want it to go. And that's one of the keys with the contrast paint is putting it on the model and then use the brush to push it where you want it to pull and then drag your brush, end the brush strokes in the recesses and the darker parts of the miniature and then where you want the raised areas to be highlighted, just clean off your brush in some kitchen roll and then wick away the paint a little bit from those areas. Next, we're gonna move on to some contrast Velopus pink, and this is a great color, and this is gonna look awesome for the hair. This is a really nice contrast paint that leaves a good amount of shadow while leaving those raised areas highlighted. And I'm putting it right in there in the gaps and I'm putting quite a bit of paint on just the tip of my brush now because I'm being quite careful where I want this to go. And you can see there's a little headband that I'm trying to avoid because that's going to be gold. So I'm just pushing that paint into where I want it to be, guiding it around, making sure that the area with the shadow is getting the most paint. And you can see there I'm just wiping against the grain of the hair and that's going to kind of drag off a lot of paint off the brush and keep it in those areas of shadow. And I'm going back and forth, making sure I've got enough paint there. I switched to a smaller brush, and I shouldn't have really. I've got to start sticking to these, these longer brushes, because although it seems counterintuitive, it's actually better to use the longer brushes. So this is, this is too small, it doesn't hold enough paint, and I'm having to go back and forth quite a lot. Now we're gonna move on to the Contrast Terrid and Turquoise and Shyish Purple. And this is gonna be for the cloak. And we're gonna do a wet blend now. So for this wet blend, 
I've got both paint pots open and this is important so I'm ready to go while the paint is, is wet and applied to the model and I'll be ready to mix the two colours at the same time when I get to it. But here I'm just applying the Terradon turquoise to this part of the cloak and then as we work our way around to the back we're going to do a wet blend between this turquoise and the purple. And I'm going to keep this going in real time and not cut this just so you can see exactly how it's done and have a good idea of how the two colours mix together. And this probably won't work with all the different colours of contrast paint. I mean I haven't tried them yet, all the different ones in this technique, but these two colours are kind of perfect for this. They work so well together. So here we are, I'm just going around this area now and taking my time not to get this turquoise on any other parts of the model. And I'm not putting too much paint on my brush now at this stage, but as we get to the back, I will start loading that brush up with quite a lot of paint. And if you want to see this technique done on the other Knight Shadow Stalkers, then you can check out my videos on the Shroud Queen and the Slaughter Shade and the Shroud Blade as well. So there's a few different cloaks there to see this happening with. And now here we're starting to get a little bit thicker and I'm putting a bit more paint on the brush now because we've got some really thick grooves where I want a nice deep shadow. And trying to end my brush stroke where in the recesses as well but also going against the, the grain and the raised areas to drag the paint off and then using the tip of my brush I'm just pushing that paint and guiding it to where I want it to go. So now we're getting to the bit where the wet blend is going to come along. So I'm going to start putting more and more paint now because I don't want this to dry too quickly here. So I'm just taking my time near that hair. And there you can see I've really started to put quite a bit on. And we're building that up now. And this is going to be a nice area of paint where we want it to pool. And now I'm straight into the purple and I'm mixing the paint on the model. So there's lots of turquoise on there already and then I loaded the brush up with purple and then I mixed the two paints together and then slow a bit more purple and then just started to pull that down now so we've taken care of the fade and we're just going to drag that now and start going purple all the way to the end of the cloak and then I'm going to go back with a little bit of green in a second a bit of the turquoise in a second and I'm just wiping my brush off on a paper towel I just want to start pulling some of that colour, that mixed colour, up towards the top and into the shadows. And that's just going to extend that blend and try and make it as natural as we can. And so we're looking for a, a tabletop battle ready standard here. You know, you're not going to win any prizes for this style of painting, but if you want to do something quickly but get a nice effect, I think this is a really good technique and with just a little bit of practice on a couple of models, you can soon get it down and then you can get a nice effect on some models that look really cool on the tabletop and it's quite quick to do and it's fun and you get a good result in the end. If you've got an airbrush I mean you certainly want to be doing your blends with an airbrush or doing layers um, but obviously that's going to take a lot longer. Uh, it's going to look better and you're going to get some great results um, but right now I don't have an airbrush nor do I have the skills to do that that effect anyway so for me this works just right I'm really happy with it. That's all now still wet and we got a nice blend with just a little bit of, of work there and now I'm going in with just purple and I'm going to do all the inside of that cloak there all in the shyest purple and cover that all the way up because that's going to be the darkest of the shadow. And now that's starting to dry you can see we got a real nice fade there really quick and easy and you saw it happen in just a couple of minutes. Now we're going to take some Ceramite White and this is a base paint and I'm going to use this to touch up all the areas where I've gone over the areas that haven't been painted yet. So ideally I'd use a Wraithbone layer paint for this but I don't have one so I'm going with the white and this is going to work just fine. In fact it's going to give us a nice pale skin which we want for our Knight Shadow Stalkers. So I'm putting more on the forehead there because that's going to be really shiny. We want a nice highlight up there and also the tips of the ears. So I'm not touching those up but rather 
apply in some extra white paint there just to give us a nicer highlight. But I am going over the areas certainly where that black has overlapped and where some of the turquoise from the cloak too. Now I've gone back to the contrast snake bite leather and this is going to be for the weapons and here I've just decided to give them pretty much a coat of snake bite leather, do the metal work in a silver and then I'll use a different colour for the actual bowstring. And so just as before just loading the brush up and putting it in even on these smaller areas the technique's still the same where you start and end your brush strokes where you want most of the paint to pull in the shadows and then clean off your brush on some paper towel if you want to wick away some of the paint from the more raised areas. But this snake bite leather is such a great paint you don't have to worry too much just one coat of it and it seems to settle just in the right places all on its own so it's really cool. And now I'm just taking my time being really careful and that's another key with the contrast paints just stick within the lines and then if you do make a mistake just make sure you go over it with some base paint tidy it up and then put more contrast on it. Now we're on to some skeleton hoard and this is going to be for those bow strings and this is a nice colour paint that's going to go well with a snake bite leather and not stand out too much. Now we're going to start on the metal parts with some lead belcher base paint and this is going on all the silver weapons and any silver metal on the miniature. And I'm just putting one nice thick coat of this on and that's going to cover up all the blades and make that look really good. And then for the gold metal, I'm going to use a different colour. I'm going to use a, a gold paint for that one. But on some previous models and terrain I've done, I used lead belcher for both the silver and the gold weapons and metal parts. And that works really well with different coloured contrast paints applied over it. But here I'm just sticking to the lead belcher for the silver parts because with these Knight Shadow Stalkers they're a bit more shiny, a bit more bling and I think I wanted to use like a real nice bright gold for the gold metal and the gold weapons and their crowns and that kind of thing. So there we go, I'm just finishing off the metal on the crossbows here. And that's pretty much, not too much metal on this particular miniature and no crown either. So I'm just finishing that and then we'll move on to the next part, which is the gold. And this is a 0.996 from Vallejo. Again, just one coat and I squeeze a little bit out. I'm just using it as it came out with no water. I haven't wet it down. And this is going on all the gold parts, including this kind of uh, badge on the cloak there, giving it a nice coat. And now I'm being really careful because I don't want to get this on any areas that I've painted already, especially the areas with the contrast paints. Because at this stage, if I had to go back and touch up the contrast paints with white and then start the process again, then I'm going to get something that doesn't look very neat or tidy. So it's really important to take your time here at this stage and get that, um, get that gold on really neatly. And here we go, I'm just putting some on the knee guards as well but these are pretty much weapons too they're mental <laughs> and now back to the pterodon turquoise and i'm just touching up some areas that i missed there and they've also got these little pouches so i'm painting those little pouches with some of that turquoise too and now this is getting fiddly because we're trying to be as careful as i can so i'm making sure i'm moving the model so it makes it easier for me i know exactly where i'm going to go with my brush and i'm just preparing myself before I apply the paint, just so I'm braced. I've got my, my arms, both of my arms like braced on the table. And so I'm nice and steady. I can go really in carefully to exactly where I want to apply the paint. And then there we go. That's that little bit finished now. And so now I'm going to take some null oil shade. And this is going on all the silver parts we previously painted. And it's important to make sure this silver lead belcher is completely dry before putting this on. And I apply this in much the same way as a contrast paint, a nice thick coat, and then just spread it around, you know, trying to get more in those, in those shadow areas and trying to leave it off the highlighted areas as much as possible. Next, we're going to take some Agoras Dunes contrast paint. And this is a great paint to use over that Vallejo gold. And again, like the lead belcher, just make sure the gold paint is fully dry before you put this on. And then the Agoras Dunes will go on and it'll kind of colour the gold a little bit better 
it'll give a really nice shadow color, but it will also leave those raised areas really bright and vibrant and, and that gold coming through is going to contrast really well against the shadow that this leaves behind. And there we go, I'm just putting some on that kind of badge brooch thing there and just check in the model for all the different areas of gold, taking my time, making sure I don't miss anything out. We're taking some contrast medium and contrast Gilliman flesh and we're going to mix three part of the contrast medium to one part Gilliman flesh and this is going to be the tone we're going to use for all our skin and flesh areas. And this is going to leave the, the skin nice and bright because we don't want these to be tanned. You know, the kind of law and the background for these, they are quite pale. So I'm just using this really lightly and um, just trying to get it mostly in the shadows, but not really on the raised areas, almost white on the raised areas, very faint highlight here but trying to get a lot of it in the areas of shadow where it's under that cloak. I also want to get quite a little bit on the kind of tattoo on the head there. So I'm just push it, pushing it in and then I'm going to wipe a lot of that away and wick it off with my brush. But I wanted to get quite a little bit to settle in there. So in that tattoo, it kind of did stand out whilst also leaving it quite highlighted on the forehead too. And now I'm just putting some in those little bits of skin you can see through the boots too and just making sure see how I drag my brush just dragging it off so that the paint settles in those recesses and just let the contrast paint do the work for you here just get it in the right place guide it around and then once it's where you want it another key is just to leave it alone don't try and move it too much so once it's in place just leave it and then um, you can always add another coat if you want it darker and that's what I'm doing here, just adding a little bit more to that tattoo on the head there. And then I'm going to just wipe off the forehead because I only want it to fall into the little groove. And now we're going back to some of the Null Oil. And I'm going to put this on the hair. And this is just going to give us a little bit darker shadow, just at the where the two parts of the hair meet that gold headband. And just gives it a nice little, little deeper, darker touch there. And it works quite well, I think. To the end now so we're going to take some 0.997 silver and this is going to be for our highlights and now I'm using this silver highlight on all the gold and the metal that is colored silver already and on previous models I used um, a gold highlight the same Vallejo gold we used earlier and I thought that would make it more shiny but in fact it doesn't this silver makes it look more more shiny gold so so now i'm definitely going to do this in the future as well so i'm using silver as the highlight for the gold as well and i think it works really nice and especially for the knight shadow stalkers we want them to be standing out a bit bling and shiny so this works really good for that now i'm going to take some of the shyish purple and this is just going to be for the little rock that's attached to the foot there at the base and this is the same color I used on the K Knight Shadow Stalkers bases, and you can see that video on my channel too, where I made those. And I'm painting this so it just blends in with those bases. So that's all done. So now I'm just going to take my clippers, run it under the sprue, a little gentle snip, and that just snaps off nicely. The same on the foot, give it a little snap, and that pops off really well. And just be careful not to chip any of the paint or take any of the other plastic off. And here's the base that I made. And we're going to fix this to the miniature with some of the super glue again. And I've created a video on the, how I did this. So if you want to watch that in more detail, I've put a video up on how to fix miniatures to bases that you can check out too. And there we go. There's our finished Dark Flame Warlock with repeater crossbows or with contrast paint to a tabletop battle ready standard. And I'm really happy with the results we got in quite a quick time. And it's just gonna look great amongst the other members of the warband, especially against that orange board that we get with the catacomb set. I really hope this video has helped you and um, I'd love to hear some feedback and your thoughts. So please join in in the comments below. I'll put links to all the paints I used in the description below and there'll be affiliate links but they won't cost you anything. In fact, they're going to save you up to 20% with Element Games. 
and for every sale made through the affiliate links, I get a small commission and that helps me develop the channel and produce much more Warcry content like this. So thanks so much for that support, I really appreciate it. All the videos for the Shroud Queen and the other members of the K Knight Shadowstalkers are up on my channel, so check those out if you'd like to see those too. And thanks so much for watching, please like if you like it, subscribe for more content like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.